सो हेलो फ्रेंड्स एंड वेलकम यू ऑल टू सेल टू एम डी एस डेंटल अकेडमी आई होप यू ऑल आर फाइन एंड डूइंग ग्रेट इफ यू हैव एनी प्रॉब्लम एनी डाउट्स यू कैन ई मेल मी व्हाट्सएप मी एंड कैन राइट ऑन द कमेंट बॉक्स बिल सो टूडे वी आर हियर विद द लेक्चर ऑन लोकल अनस्थेशिया कॉम्प्लिकेशन दिस लेक्चर विल बी प्रेजेंटेड इन टू पार्ट द पार्ट वन विल बी लोकल कॉम्प्लिकेशन एंड पार्ट टू विल बी सिस्टमिक कॉम्प्लिकेशन एज वी नो that uh, we all use local anesthesia this lecture will be beneficial for mds aspirants dentist students as well as for clinician as we should know how to prevent and manage those complication so this lecture will be presented in the form of mind map which help us to remember the thing easily so i hope you all will be benefited so friends let's get started with the local complications of local anesthesia So hello friends now before we study about the local anesthesia complication we will see certain features of such complication so you can see the radiograph of broken needle in the trigeminal space this arrow indicate the needle second is the trismus the classical picture the locked jaw mostly associated with inferior alveolar nerve block then the hematoma the picture it is due to the mental or the incisive nerve block remember the psa is most commonly associated with the hematoma followed by inferior nerve block and third is the mental or the incisive nerve block this is transient facial nerve paralysis seen when you injure your facial nerve and these are post anesthesia trauma commonly seen in children when they accidentally bite their lip so this were some pictures and radiographs now we will study complication in the form of mind maps so now we will see complications associated with local anesthesia mostly we can see two types of complication local and systemic local complication are of further two types immediate local and delayed local so now we will focus on immediate local complication so first one is spotty anesthesia of nerve that is what inadequate soft and hard tissue anesthesia it occurs because of two thing the first is improper technique of la administration that is you fail to follow proper anatomical landmarks and second is injection into the inflamed or infected tissue what happened in the infected tissue the ph is acidic so the deprotonization of your local anesthetic solution will not occur so your ions will not able to reach the endonuclear and in such case you will get the spotty anesthesia if it occurs you can follow the supplemental injection technique like a periodontal ligament injection technique or a intraoperable anesthesia and you even can reinject following proper accurate anatomical landmarks the second one is burning or a pain on injection okay so why this burning occur the ph of local anesthetic solution is around 5 but if the ph tends to reduce near about 3 3.5 the solution turn acidic and it causes mild burning to the patient when injected so in such cases you have to use a solution that is neither too hot nor too cold it should be around your room temperature second is pain on injection it occurs due to the use of broader gauge needle use of blunt barb needle if your injection technique is speed of the injection is very rapid it can occur so how could you decrease the pain on injection use of sharp or a narrow gauge needle you can use a topical anesthetics your injection speed should be around 1.8 ml per minute the ideal is 1 ml per minute the third is the needle breakage nowadays the incidence of needle breakage are very rare because of the availability of disposable needles but it can occur due to sudden unexpected movement of patient most commonly seen in children whenever the needle breaks it mostly break at the hub region because that is the most rigid portion of the needle even the needle can break when it has been bent previously so avoid bending your needle if such incident occur remember if the fragment is visible remove it with the help of small hemostat 
or Mengele's intubation forcer. If it is not visible, take the radiographs in two planes perpendicular to each other. This radiograph will help you to locate the area of a broken needle. Sometimes you have to use additional needle or that is known as a guide needle to locate the area of broken needle. So as we know the uh, guide needle area, so with the help of that we can approximate where the broken needle is there and you can remove it. Okay, fine. So this were the immediate local complications seen when you are administering your local anesthesia. So to avoid this, uh, you know what you can do? You can uh, go for the use of a proper gauge needle. The recommended gauge is 25 or 27 gauge. Never use very thin 30 gauge needle. The second one is the needle should be longer of somewhere about near about 18 mm in length. Now we will see delayed complication. The first one is strismus. What is strismus? That is a locked jaw. Because of prolonged spasm of jaw muscle, the patient cannot able to open the mouth fully. The trismus is most commonly seen with inferior alveolar nerve block. Whatever when you repeatedly inject the area to look at the proper injection site, you traumatize the muscles which causes the trismus. Even due to blood vessels uh, trauma, the hematoma will be occur which compresses the muscle and that causes the trismus. So how will you prevent or treat if trismus happen? The first one is that you have to give analgesics to the patient along with muscle relax relaxants. You can advise the patient to go for a hot fermentation somewhere about uh, uh, 20 minutes every hour. Okay, you can tell them to use a hot moist towel and apply to the area for 20 minutes that will act as an analgesic also and will decrease muscle spasm and the soundness. The third is patients should practice physiotherapy for the opening of the mouth and lateral exertions. The best thing you can do is a prescribed patient the sugarless candy. If you if the infection is there, you can give the proper antibiotics. Reassure the patient that this trismus is not permanent and it will resolve in a period of 1 to 7 days. Remember, a study has been done by a internet et al. that when this trismus will occur, the trismus can occur within a 1 to 7 days post operatively. The average time is 2.9 days. Okay, friend. So now, second, we will see the soft tissue injury. So, when this soft tissue injury occurs, whenever the patient will inadvertently bite his or her tissue. It is most commonly seen in children because they are unaware of the numbness. It is also seen in adults when they consume the hot fluid till the numbness has been veined off. So the soft tissue injury is most commonly seen after inferior nerve block because after, after that we can see the numbness of the leap engine. So how could you prevent it? First, the proper instruction should be given to the patient. Second, you can place a cotton roll between lips and teeth and if at all the injury occur, prescribe topical anesthetic to the patient and advise them to go for the warm saline rinses which decreases the discomfort and soreness. Now we will see the hematoma. What is hematoma? It is the effusion of blood into extravascular space. It occurs when you accidentally nick the blood vessel. Hematoma is most commonly associated when you accidentally injure artery rather than the vein. The amount of hematoma depends upon the density of the tissue. Now for example, hematoma is rarely seen in a palatal area because the tissue density is very less. But it can seen in the infratangular area and the pterygomandular area because there you can see the large space for the blood to effuse. So hematoma is most commonly seen with the posterior superior alveolar nerve block and inferior alveolar nerve block. In case of PSA, when we injure the pterygoid venous plexus, there will be the hematoma in the pterygomandibular space. So that causes the extra oral swelling. In case of inferior alveolar nerve block, when we injure the inferior alveolar vessels, there will be the intraoral swelling. Fine. So whenever you encounter such hematoma, the immediate application of pressure at the bleeding site. In case of PSA, the Digital pressure should be applied distal to the maxillotuberosity. Patient should be immediately 
uh, uh, told to go for the eyes application no heat should be applied initially for the 4 to 6 hours but the, after that the heat should be applied that allows the act as analgesic also and decreases soreness you have to prescribe a certain analgesics and uh, antibodies to the patient when you see hematoma this hematoma will also resolve in a period of 7 to 14 days then sloughing or a necrosis of tissue it is most commonly seen in palatal region that the mucoperiosteum is a tightly adherent to the bone of the hard palate. So whenever you inject the alley, you can see the blanching there. And even if after the blanching, you go for the uh, LA administration, there will be ischemia, which result in the sterile abscess-like area. So we can see the necrosis of the palatal region. It is also occur when the topical anesthetic is applied for a prolonged period in the gingival region. You can see the epithelial discoloration. So take care to avoid such sloughing or a necrosis of the tissue. So now we will see transient facial nerve paralysis. It is most commonly associated with inferior alveolar nerve block. So what happened? The parotid gland forms the posterior border of infratemporal space where you deposit your solution for the inferior alveolar nerve block. So when you do not follow the proper uh, injection technique and your needle is inserted too far posteriorly, it is in the parotid gland. So whatever the solution you inject, that will be deposited in the parotid gland. So in parotid gland lies the terminal branches of facial nerve. So this solution will cause transient facial nerve paralysis. And you can land up with the symptoms of facial nerve paralysis like uh, the patient is unable to uh, blow, the absence of wrinkling on the forehead, they are not able to close the eye. So whenever such thing happens, you should reassure the uh, patient that the problem is transient and it will go once the effect of anesthetic will subside. Sometimes it is required to give the patient eye patches to until the normal muscle tone uh, uh, reappears. Second, if the patient is wearing the contact uh, lens, you have to tell them to remove it. So this problem is transient and will go off. Second is persistent anesthesia or paresthesia. That is a altered sensation. It can occur by two ways, directly by injuring the nerve. So we will see in the uh, our future video that regarding nerve injuries that uh, injury like uh, first degree injury, second degree injury, third degree injury. So whenever you directly injure the nerve, such anesthesia uh, can occur. Indirectly by pressure from the hematoma. So whenever such persistent anesthesia occurs, it resolves with the treatment within a period of 8 weeks. But sometimes it takes a little longer period. So always follow the patient and check for the nerve regeneration.